Hi, BookTube. It's Peggy at the History Shelf. It's good to see you, my friends, and you are all my friends. I've loved getting to know each and every one of you in the comments and elsewhere. Um, so, uh, without further ado, I know that the shelf tours have been very much requested, and a lot of you have shown interest in Russian history in particular. So, what I'm going to do today, uh, I mean, I'm not starting at the top over here and going down sequentially like some folks do. I'm just going to kind of pick and choose based on what you guys are interested in. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, so let's start with this shelf. It begins some of the Russian history, but I'm going to just start at the beginning so we can be complete here. So let me just go ahead and adjust that a little bit. It's going to cut me off a little. Okay. So um, right here I have Andrew Roberts Napoleon. Um, this was a recent biography. Uh, he is just an amazing historian, biographer. We all know his massive Churchill book just came out. But uh, prior to that, this is the one-stop shop for Napoleon. It's been hailed as the best one-volume biography of Napoleon. And of course, the same has been said of uh, Churchill. So anyway, this is Andrew Roberts, Napoleon. And then, oh, yeah, I also acquired a second biography. This is, uh, and I haven't read this one yet. This is Adam Zamoyski, uh, Napoleon, A Life. And uh, he has several books. And, uh, I have more upstairs. They're not all together. But um, he's an amazing writer. He's written on the piece of, uh, piece of 18. Oh, hang on a second, guys. Oh, I'm never ready for this. Um, 1812, Napoleon's Fatal March on Moscow in Phantom Terror. Um, uh, it's got another book called Rights of Something. I need to be, I need to have a list of all these writers' works, but there we go. Get a good look at that. It's a beautiful, beautiful volume, and I'm looking forward to reading this one. To go along with Napoleon real quick, we've got Waterloo, and this one is by uh, Gordon Corrigan. This is Wellington, Napoleon, and the Battle That Saved Europe. Sorry, I'm getting cut off here. I'm using a new camera setup. It's attached to the end of the table in front of me. It has an extension, but it's hard to see. It's hard to see. There we go. Let's try that. Uh, yeah, so if you guys are a Waterloo, I know Jason uh, collects um, Waterloo, Napoleana stuff, and uh, I'm not sure if you have this one, Jason. I'm sure that you probably do. Maybe not in this edition. Uh, but pretty cool. Pretty slim read there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This next book. Ah, it's one of the ones that I haven't uh, dipped into yet. But I'm really excited. This is going to be a meaty intellectual read. Fatal Discord. Erasmus, Luther, and the Fight for the Western Mind by Michael Massing. This is from Harper. Um, heady stuff, you know. I <laughs> So... Technically, I am a Lutheran. I was baptized Lutheran. I'm not confirmed, but uh, I know I know of Luther. I've read uh, Here I Stand and uh, uh, a few, you know, a little bit of his catechism. Also, uh, Bondage of the Will. Thank you. Gosh, I am just I just cannot remember these things sometimes. But anyway, um, but I know Erasmus and Luther definitely had. Um, and a very heady intellectual debate about certain matters theological uh, going back and forth and I just I heard about this book yeah, about a year or two ago this came out last year so it's, it's relatively new and I do want to read it soon so there you go okay now we're moving into uh, Russian Russian stuff for sure Ooh, this is a good one here St. Petersburg by Jonathan Miles uh, subtitle is Madness, Murder, and Art on the Banks of the Neva. So this is all about the city, the city of St. Petersburg, and what a rich history it was. Um, got beautiful maps and artwork. Modern day photos, sorry for the glare. Um, Oh, and yeah, of course, it just talks about the art, the culture, um, 
every Russian uh, historian nut needs to have a book on St. Petersburg or two or three or four. And this one I, I highly recommend, Jonathan Miles, St. Petersburg. And now we move into a, uh, a writer of mine that I really, really enjoy, Helen Rappaport. Um, she's written books on uh, Prince Albert, Victoria, Queen Victoria, um, but she's also done a lot of work on the Romanovs. And I simply love her. But before we get to the Romanovs, here is one of hers on Victoria and Albert. This is Magnificent Obsession, Victoria and Albert, and the death that changed the British monarchy. So this is going along well with also I have a, a new biography to to read and review for Open Letters uh, by Ann Wilson. It's the new biography in Prince Albert. Um, so Helen Rappaport has, you know, a, covered the, uh, the the territory pretty widely uh, and uh, in depth so but she's a great writer I love her okay all right this one is a little bit uh, no maybe not this is also Helen Rappaport caught in the revolution Petrograd Russia let me get in there 1917 a world on the edge so basically she is uh, taking a look at Petrograd, which was St. Petersburg, and uh, which, you know, the Bolsheviks renamed it. And this book covers that period, um, right pre-revolution there, or on the edge of it. And uh, just she just writes amazing books on this period. She's really passionate about it, and it comes through in her work. And to that effect, I have to say, so far one of my favorites of hers and I highly recommend this to all of you. Please get to go out and read this book because, for, well, first of all, I've always been uh, in, in, infatuated or very intrigued, shall we say, by the Romanov sisters. Um, they are just these quiet voices that you never hear from. Um, it's always about Nicholas II, Alexandra, and of course the male heir, Alexei, um, who had uh, hemophilia. But um, these four sisters and their relationship to each other and the family, uh, it's just, I've always been intrigued by these four. Um, this one is uh, The Lost Lives of the Daughters of Nicholas and Alexandra. And uh, again, probably the best book so far that I've enjoyed on the topic from Helen Rappaport. She really dives into their diaries, their letters, um, and they really come through. Each girl had their own unique personality, which I love. You know, I have an older sister, and and uh, I'm just fascinated by siblings, you know, and, and how they relate to each other in the certain times that they live in. And uh, and these girls were dedicated to each other, their family. They were very devout. Um, they served as a couple of them, the older girls, um, Olga, Olga and Tatiana, served as nurses um, uh, in World War One, and uh, along with their mother. Queen Alexandra, or Tsaritsa Alexandra, and uh, I just this this book just brought it all together and how much how much of a unit this family was, which uh, I'm intrigued by. So anyway, Romanov sisters, please go out and get this book. You will love it. All right. And I believe this I believe this was the latest book by Helen Rappaport, but let me let me double check here. Yes, this came out last year. This is The Race to Save the Romanovs. Uh, the Truth Behind the Secret Plans to Rescue the Russian Imperial Family. And that was quite a, a heart-racing tale. Um, people were trying to get to them. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the, the, the Russian, the whites, were uh, moving towards Ekaterin, Ekaterinburg. And uh, I think that's what triggered the Bolshevik local committees on Lenin's order to um, execute, to assassinate, to cold-bloodedly murder this family and a couple of their servants in a tiny basement room. Uh, it was horrific, you know, that, that part of the story is just, it's just something you can't conceive like going through, but they did and uh, I was watching uh, when they were being um, canonized in the Russian Orthodox Church and seeing seeing what remains were left of each family member interred 
in uh, I forget which it was the it's the main Orthodox cathedral and I think it was in St. Petersburg. Uh, but anyway, they were finally laid to rest, and they've they've had a resurgence of popularity amongst uh, modern day Russia, at least among some of the Russian people, especially those of faith. So um, yeah, this is her most recent book. So we're kind of covering the gamut, you know, pre-revolution, um, the sisters. Uh, yeah, she's got a great series going. I hope she, she can find another angle to tackle, but she's really covered a lot here. Anyway, I highly recommend you check out Helen Rappaport in all of her books on the Romanov. Um, one other book that was not on the shelf, but I knew that I should show it for this, uh, this bookshelf tour, uh, because it goes along with it, is another book I have on the Romanovs called The Fate of the Romanovs. Sorry by Greg King and Penny Wilson. Um, it's just uh, another big, massive volume. You know, I've, I've read everything on uh, from Edward Radzinski on the last Tsar. Um, Robert K. Massey is also a great um, biographer and historian on the, on, the, on the era. And I did not have Greg King and Penny Wilson. So they kind of just cover the same stuff here. Um, but I could read this stuff over and over again. I'd never get tired of it. It's just, um, it's just riveting, riveting life uh, experiences. And um, yeah, if you guys are interested, Fate of the Romanovs by Greg King and Penny Wilson. Okay. And yes, the big awesome book by Simon Sebag Montefiore, Romanov, 1613 to 1918. Another one of my favorite writers. Um, let me see if I have it over here. Oh, it's a little bit, well, he's written on Stalin, so I have another book down here. Okay, It's The Court of the Red Czar. I have that next to the Stalin books, but um, this is, he takes it back to the Romanovs and the founding uh, of the Romanovs in the, um, the early 17th century. This is a magnificent, uh, addition to the field. It's deco-ledged. Got it in hardcover as soon as it came out. You know, when you're into a certain topic or subject and these books come out, I always just get them in hardcover. You know, I, I budgeted for them and <laughs> uh, you just have to have. And uh, Simon Seabag Montefiore, Montefiore is one of the best. So if you haven't checked out his work, I highly suggest you see if your library has it or pick up, it's probably, I'm sure it's in paperback now, but this is a great book. Okay, a couple of great books on Rasputin because what uh, Romanov story is complete without our favorite bad guy, Rasputin. And uh, let's see, this is a this is one of the most recent books on it. And uh, this is the Rasputin, the untold story. Look at that picture. Look at those eyes. I mean. I think it, it tells you everything you need to know about this guy. I mean, crazy, madness, lechery, evil, this guy right there. Um, this is by Joseph T. Furman. And this came out, this came out, oh no, I take that back. This came out in 2013. Okay, that's crazy. I think the one I'm about to show you is the most recent one. This is a slimmer volume. Um, just another take on Rasputin. I've read countless books on Rasputin. Intriguing character. Okay, so this bad boy, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this one. Ah, there we go. Rasputin. Uh, Faith, Power, and the Twilight of the Romanovs by Douglas Smith. So this is a big bio size. It really goes into a lot of detail. Um, I'm going to admit, I haven't gotten to this one yet, but, uh, oh my gosh, it's like 678 pages. It's a monster. Um, yeah, but I, I acquire books faster than I can read them. I'm not going to, you know, um, shine you on here, but, um, but I read them. I read them in my own time, and I really absorb what I read. Uh, so I don't read 150 pages um, an hour, <laughs> like some booktubers I know. Uh, but I'm working on it, <laughs> um, but I love learning and, uh, I just can't get enough of the subject. 
I'm sure every Romanov book, Rasputin book that has come out or will come out, I will likely, it'll pass through my hands and this library. So Rasputin right here. Um, okay, I'm sure a lot of you who do read Russian uh, history are aware of Robert Service. He is a great writer and historian of that era. I picked this up, Spies and Commissars. Boomer, sorry, my dog's being a little spastic right now. I might have to end this. Okay, the early years of the Russian Revolution. So another take on the Russian Revolution, you guys. I just want to give you a taste of what's out there and what's on my shelf because you're curious. So this is Robert Service, good book. And then his most recent one is The Last of the Tsars. Again, I have to own every single book that comes out. Um, the subtitle here is Nicholas II and the Russian Revolution, simply enough. Um, light, breezy read. Uh, these things just, you know, tell me a lot of things I already knew, but uh, I, I love the stories. There's Nicholas and his son, Alexei. And there's him again, and there's Rasputin. I love this picture of Nicholas II and George V because they were spitting images of, of one another. They were cousins. So let's see if you can see that. Sorry. There you go. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and the photos are great. I love see, and I love the old photos of the uh, the Romanov family. And ooh, then we got the bad guys. Oh yeah, Lenin. And this guy, I believe that's a guy who, uh, yeah, Yakov Yurovsky. He he oversaw the execution of the family. This this very noble, fine communist, socialist, whatever, gentleman right here on the orders of Lenin, so not big fan. Okay, then we have The End of Tsarist Russia by Dominic Livin, or Livin, The March to World War I and Revolution. Uh, and yeah, he also wrote Russia Against Napoleon. So all of these things are of a piece in a way. They all kind of tie in to the overall story of Russia. Um, this is a very recent book. Let me see, this came out, well, four years ago, 2015. It still feels like it's it's so brand new. <laughs> Just because I keep them in such good condition. Uh, again, I have a lot of books on the Russian Revolution, as you can see. All right, and then we move into, oh boy. Yep, it's Lenin. But I have to say, I'm really struck by this cover. I do love this cover. The, uh, the subtlety, the, this, the, the bold colors. There's not a lot of busyness going on. And it, it replicates a lot of the Russian propaganda artwork that they, um, they put out at the time. Sorry, my dog is whimpering. So I'm going to have to probably cut this short and make a second part. Uh, this is by Victor Sebastian, the man, the dictator, and the master of terror. Sorry about that, guys. So I would check this one out as well. This goes along with my, my Stalin biographies on the next shelf. Okay, I gotta go check on my dog, but I will start a second video soon. So stay tuned. Thanks guys, bye. Boomer.